So the wa waving breeze is a filter that will, well, as it says, wave it in a breeze. You're looking at the landscape. This one is not exactly a good starting point, but you can see it has a little bit similar to the other one we saw earlier um, and the wiggle warp. And this one is basically going to give you a bit of a waving motion. And this is really something you'd want to use with trees or with grass. So let's just paint something very quickly. Uh, let's say, um, let's, let's go erase it first to black or maybe blue. Uh, let's change the secondary color there. Some sort of a sky blue, something like that and erase to that. And, um, and then we'll, create a, uh, a quick foreground set of uh, what do we have particle brushes here let's do some baddie grass and just do some stuff like that actually this is not what we need we need a bit more of a let's go to the uh, settings here or particles there they are uh, we need a little bit more of uh, tall grass so maybe even trees we have a couple of presets here. I'm sure some of the these will work just fine. Oh, how about this one, the Joshua tree? Now I want it to be taller, so I'm going to go with the initial velocity that's more in the 12s. There you go. All right. Or I could go with a seven and then give it a bit more of a lifespan, maybe five or six. Okay. So yeah, that will be good enough just to get a gist of it, right? So I want this to wave sideways in like a wind motion uh, simulation and that's what that is going to do right? so with the wave in breeze well first of all i need to have this all across the animation so i'm going to start from this image and create an animation and say this one's going to be 123 because i'm lazy and <laughs> and i'm going to go and wiggle not wiggle warp but wave in the breeze right there you go wave in breeze and the power maybe not so much so you get to preview that and you can see if it's distorting it a lot uh, the frequency you know are there multiple parts like a sine wave going through it or is it more kind of one big block uh, the speed at which it's moving and then there's some extra shearing and one way or the other all right so do it only a little bit there and animate that so now you see this movement waving in the breeze and of course you you'd probably use this with another animation so one way to do that is pick this up in a custom brush in a custom animated brush you can um, you can pick that up with this tool here the custom brush selector tool and you'll uh, use the alt key to select everything not just the current frame but the rest of the animation sequence as you saw it just went across all animations here and picks them up into an animated brush as long as you have enough memory to do so you are adventurous here when you do this but that brush can be stored and if the brush was actually showing this these colors here in the background are the same colors as what's still the secondary color it becomes the transparent background inside the brush and so it automatically flags that this way so you can basically click here to make this your current brush. You can enable the eye that watches over what you're doing, and you can make it fully opaque with the opacity going to 255, but it's opaque on the grass or on the bush, whereas it's uh, transparent on its background. And you can paint with it. And as you're painting, especially if you reduce the step size to zero or one or two, you'll notice that it's actually flying through this breezing wave motion. Right. So how do you use this? Well, typically, uh, you might go back to one of those sky images, like this one here, and you have this thing that you want to have maybe somewhere in, on the side animated. Right. So you could paint this manually with the Alt key, and that's not exactly what you probably want to do, but it's a first way to try, and we learn from mistakes. <laughs> so here we now have an animated brush that's uh, being painted over the, the background that's animated too. Let's do this better with the animated brush keyframer. So I'm going to go with the animation, animated brush keyframer. There it is, brush keyframer. And remember, I have this brush, but it's an animated brush because I can show the film strip. And here they are, all of these frames with the, the wave in the breeze motion that was forged into it. 
I can now see that here in the animated brush or in the brush keyframer, right? So this brush can be an animated or it can be a static one, but whatever it is, we can have it rendered. And you see, as you scrub through the animation in this preview, you can see that the brush itself is also animated. And you could, of course, keyframe where the brush is going through. Right. You could change its size, you could change uh, the angle. You change the hue over here in the stored copy. That takes a little while because it applies that to each of the frames. And you can see it's just barely changing the scale here. This is making it smaller. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Or just reset it. And instead, change the hue, the saturation, and the value. So if you want a different color on that brush, there, it's a little bit more dry brush now, more reddish. Let's do even more. And then perhaps also a little bit brighter hue, saturation, closer saturation. It'll make it look a little bit closer, uh, a little bit brighter. There you go. So when you get the brush, click on here in your animated brush keyframer. You now have this newer version, and you could just render it across, or you could keyframe it so it's even moving sideways, you know, tumbleweed style. Uh, <laughs> let's do a little bit of a tumbleweed. All right, so we'll have it perhaps rotated one way at first and a little bit bigger, and then we'll move it down. So we don't see the edge. It's not a, a round tumbleweed, uh, but we'll have it like this and a little bit to the side. Keyframe that. Oh, wait, that's the end here. Let's, key, let's delete all of the keyframes and... Uh, what we want to do is rotate. We want to be at the first frame. Okay, that's where we need to be. Keyframe that, and then go to the last keyframe. Move it a bit to the right, and scale it down a little bit, but most importantly, rotate it. And so we have the animation over here. So as you're going between those two keyframes, it is pulling the animated frame sequence from the brush and rendering it over, or displaying it in this preview over the animation that we have in the background. And then you simply render that. And you now are combining the two into a single animation. All right, close that animated brush keyframer. Let's go close the brush preview. And you now have this animation combined. All right, so that's one of the things you can do with this filter. You can make this um, wind action or making it look like wave in the breeze. And that's this one here. There are many others, a few more for you to explore. I'm going to do just one more, which is, where is it? Confetti, stabilize, motion prediction module, awesome stuff. Neutrons, let's do some neutrons. All right, so neutrons is going to essentially have something like gravitational forces pull against different particles, and that could be a really interesting thing to do. Let's do that in the next uh, tutorial.